We last reviewed this stunning Ferrari 488 Pista in October last year and the only real single negative I could find was the sound. It just doesn't match the incredible performance of this car. But the owner has just fitted a brand new exhaust system. So I guess it's time to revisit the Ferrari 488 Pista. Today's video is going to be mostly about the sound difference between how the car is now with its new exhaust system compared with when we reviewed it in October last year. So I'm not going to go into any great review detail on the car. I'm going to talk mostly about the sound and about driving the car and the driving experience. So for more details with regards to the full review of this car, I'll put a link in the description below so that you can navigate to the video that we recorded or that we created in October last year. But I'm just going to give you a quick walk around of this specific 488 Pista. So the standard 488 Pista is heavily optioned anyway because it's a 488 Pista. But this car has about 20 to 25 additional options and I'm not going to walk you through every single one of those items. We'll show you the, the options plaque on the car so you can get an appreciation of the options that were added to this car over and above the 488 piece to spec. But I'll just give you an appreciation from a very high level the spec of this car. So the paintwork is this stunning Grigio alloy which comes across on camera I believe a, like a light blue, a very light blue but its spec name is Grigio alloy. You've got carbon fiber center caps on the wheels, which was an additional option. The whole rear diffuser was optioned in carbon fiber as well. That isn't standard spec for a 408 Pista. It's also got what's called the sports black tips for the exhaust system. And then moving to the interior of the car, we've got this stunningly beautiful charcoal Alcantara interior with blue center stripe offset with this gray slash white stitching, which is absolutely stunning. You've also got Alcantara carpets down the sides. It's Alcantara section of a lower dash and you've got Alcantara mats. It's beautiful spec. The main area of storage is the front. And of course you've got this S duct which provides 20% additional downforce for the 408 Pista, but it doesn't remove too much space. You can see the S duct section here, but you've got a deep section right behind this S duct where you can get more storage space or where you have more storage space. So it's quite big, it's quite fair, which makes the car very good for a touring trip because you can get a good amount of luggage in it. And we know that because this car was on our Euro Tour, 3,100 mile Euro Tour last year. Time to get the Pista out on the road and drive it. Pista is known as a Vergiani Speciali model. In effect, the track focused, more raw edition of the production model. In this case, the 488 GTB being the base model. This version is around 1,495 kilograms. So you could say around 1,500 kilograms, which is around 90 kilograms lighter than the GTB than the 488 GTB because it's obviously lightened and more and raw because of its weight loss. The Ferrari Vergiani Speciali supercar series began with the 348 Competizione way back in 1993. It then skipped a model. There was no 355 Vergiani Speciali. There was a 355 Challenge car, but that wasn't a production Vergiani Speciali car. That was a race car. That was a pure race car. Then we move forward to the 360 Challenge Stradale, which in effect was a track version of the 360 Challenge car. And in its rawest form compared to all the other Vergiani Speciali models, that was a proper track focused car, the Challenge Stradale. And it's the only real track focused supercar for Ferrari. All the other Vergiani Speciali models are really track going editions of the production cars. And then of course came the 458 and the 458 Speciali. Next after that was the 488 Pista, which is the Vergiani Speciali for the 488 GTB model as I've already detailed. The 48 Pista differs from the 48 GTB in many ways, mostly by being lightened. Um, it's really cut down and more raw. And also with its engine performance, it's enhanced up to 710 brake horsepower. The engine is pretty much blueprinted or what we used to know back in the day is blueprinted. It has 
lightened pistons, strengthened com rods, uh, toughened com rods, lightened crankshaft and lightened flywheel. It also has carbon fibre plenum chambers. In effect, a blueprinted engine and that engine was derived from the 488 Challenge car. And this engine pushes out 710 brake horsepower, 568 pound foot of torque, rockets the car from 0 to 62 in 2.85 seconds, which is 0 0.05 seconds faster than the F8. Of course, this special race tuned engine was then used later on in the F8 Tributo and the F8 Spider. Exactly the same engine was used. Only 3,500 for eight pistas were ever made from 2019 to 2020, and that overlapped with the F8 Tributo and the F8 Spider, which was in production from 2019 to 2023. We're in a built up area now in town, and as I detailed before in my previous review, the great thing about the 408 pista is it's just so easy to drive, whether you drive it fast or whether you drive it slow. There's no jerkiness about it at all. And a lot of that is because the performance is delivered or the torque rather is delivered very linearly throughout all the gears. So it's got a, a gradiated torque delivery throughout all the gears. So you don't get all the torque at once. You only get the maximum torque in top gear, which is seventh gear in this car. That avoids issues with wheel spin and traction control having to kick in too much because you just cannot push all that torque down. At the end of the day, 568 pound foot of torque, imagine that being delivered to the rear wheels instantly. You're just gonna spin the wheels, it's just too much. So they've graduated all that torque to deliver it throughout all the gear range. So you get more torque delivered when you up shift in effect, or when you add another gear. If you're enjoying this revisit to the 408 Pista, then please give the video a thumbs up, give the video a like, very important for our channel. And if you like our style of content, then please think about subscribing. Now back to the awesome for a pista review. Now, of course, the key reason for performing this second review is to give you an appreciation of the changes to the exhaust system. Now, what's the modifications that have been made to the exhaust system are that the rear back box silencer has been removed and it's been replaced with a Brook Racing exhaust, in effect, X-pipe. So the X-pipe has replaced the rear silencer, but also, the, 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 but also the differences are that this X-pipe is in canal, so it's substantially lighter than that back box that it replaces, and it's a lot wider piped. Of course, the wider the pipe, the faster the exhaust gases can exit, and that means you get less pressure back on the system, which enables more performance. The perception is that this Brook Race exhaust X-pipe will add around 10 brake horsepower. <laughs> Now my initial experience of this X-Pipe and the differences between the exhaust system and the original OEM exhaust system on this Pista is that when we first started driving it at low speeds and when we first started it up, it's quite boomy. You can feel the vibration coming through the cabin when you're just ticking over, when the car's ticking over. Now this, this X-Pipe and this rear tail exhaust system isn't valved. So it, it hasn't got valves, there's no lower volume version. It's just full on as it is, but it is quite boomy at low volumes and you can feel the vibration coming through the chassis of the car. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it just makes it more raw. And that's not a bad thing on the, on the and that's not a bad thing for the 408 Pista because it makes it more of an event, which the 408 Pista, to be honest, does things a bit too much because in my opinion, you know, the 408 Pista is too good. I know that sounds crazy, but it's incredibly performant. It's brilliant as a GT touring car. There's no real downside. The performance delivery is very linear. It's pretty much, you cannot feel the turbos. It's so linear, it feels like a naturally aspirated car, the way they've delivered the torque across all the gear range, the way they've evened the torque out across all the gears. But what that does is that removes some of the rawness and the one key ingredient for a Vergiani Speciali model is it's a raw version of the production model. And that is elicited very well with the Challenge Stradale, the 430 Scuderia, and the 458 Speciali. It's tempered down a lot in the 408 Pista. It does it too well. It's incredibly performant, incredibly versatile, incredibly well damped. You just would not believe how well damped this is with regards to these the bumpy roads that you can drive this car on. And yes, you've got the bumpy road mode, but most of the time you don't need it. It's so well damped but that removes the rawness. So I know it sounds crazy, but it's just too good. The throatiness and the additional vibration and boominess, if that's a word, of the exhaust system over and above the OEM system 
does provide back some of that rawness, which is a good thing in my opinion, if you can live with it at low volumes. It's not over encompassing, it's not overwhelming. So it's, it's not really bad. It's not something that you couldn't live with and you can't switch it out anyway because there's no valves in the exhaust system as I, as I detailed earlier. If you were looking to purchase your first supercar or add a car to your collection, Rich Reviews has already helped multiple owners secure their dream supercar. We have a mix and match of services to help take the pain away to ensure a happy, memorable purchase away from the stress that can be caused by car research and dealing negotiations. Our mix and match of services include telephone support calls, pre-purchase inspection and car collection video. For more information, please contact me via a message in the comments below or at the following email address. Now back to the video. By the way, we've had to change, change cameras to the actual mirrorless because the GoPro is overheated. Focusing on the exhaust system now, you can see as I pull it through the rev range, the fruitiness and the vibration comes forward. And it's at lower speeds, it's actually a lot more evident that, than, and at lower speeds, it's a lot more evident than at high speeds. It just seems to be more muted at high speeds. Must be something to do with the configuration of the X-pipe system. And the X-pipe system obviously is, is in place because it, and what the X-pipe does is it allows the gases, the gas emissions from each individual bank, which are usually separated out into their separate outlets from their exhaust manifolds, allows them to mix and combine together in the X-pipe and then exit out through the exhaust system. So you get a, be a lot better, a lot raspier sound, and a lot more performance sound. As you can hear, the sound is a lot more evident at lower volumes. And you can hear that vibration come through the chassis from the X-pipe. When you actually punch it, fucking incredible performance. When you actually punch it, the sound is more muted. I would say the sound almost reverts back to how it was OEM. So at lower speeds, you get more of an enhanced throatier sound. But at high speeds, it sounds uh, comparable to OEM, I would say, or more comparable to OEM with a little bit of additional throatiness. Just going to do a pull from standing still in first gear. Nothing's behind us, nothing in front. Just to give you an appreciation of the sound now and sound difference. overwhelming it's, it's a pleasant sound and it brings back that rawness that the 488 piece that lacks because it does things too well it's too good in its standard OEM form so the 488 piece definitely needs an exhaust system to bring back some of that rawness that a proper Vergiani Speciali model should have It's a bit boomy at that lower speed. We're only in second gear now.
Virgiani Speciali, the, the, the last true native one. You could be argued really that that's the 458 Speciali because standard, that has the rawness still, as does the Scuderia and the Challenge Scudali. But the 458 Speciali is the higher performant version of all of those, of course. Having now driven the F8 Tributa, the F8 Spider, and the 488 Pista, I know which I prefer, definitely the 488 Pista. It's definitely a lot more of an event. Yes, they drive very similar, but the 48 Pista is more agile than the F8, a lot more agile than the F8. And it just, you know, look at it. It just looks absolutely stunning, the 48 Pista. The front of the car overcomes those problems with the 48 GTB, with that front section where you have that detached, what I called previously, like a grab rail at the front. It definitely improves on that substantially with the S-duck configuration on the front and the rest of the car looks sublime anyway. Yes, I know I've mentioned previously about the air vents on the haunches, in effect the air intakes for the intercoolers, for the turbo intercoolers, but you can't get away from that. It is what it is. You have to have those and they've made a, a feature of it, which looks good when you compare it to a lot of other models. The SF90, for example, looks a lot better than the SF90. So in conclusion, the exhaust provides some of that rawness back to the 408 Pista that is lacking in the standard OEM model. Um, the 408 Pista is just too good, too competent, and the Brook Racing exhaust provides some of that back, some of that rawness back. Um, it's very throaty and vibration, provides a lot of vibration for the chassis at low speeds and at tick over, which is sort of good, as long as that doesn't become overwhelming for you. Um, but it's still muted when you're pushing on, but it does provide more throatiness, more, more rawness and more, but a bit of a boominess as well to the sound of the 408 Pista, which lacks in the OEM edition. The key, key problem to the 408 Pista is it's too good. It's just too good. Fantastically performant, very, very compliant on its suspension, but that's not what you should have really with a Vergiani Special Edition model. It should be more raw, and you just don't get that rawness with a 408 Pista. But as I said, the BRE exhaust does bring some of that back. So in conclusion, in my opinion, the last true Vergiani Speciali Ferrari supercar is the 458 Speciali. There's a bombshell for you.